My name's Graham Higgins. I've been living here on the Toowoomba Escarpment, uh, backing onto council-owned parkland for over five years. I have started a group called the Toowoomba Escarpment and Bushland Action Group known as Teabag. In my spare time, I own and operate a boutique hotel called Vasey Hall, and I'm on the board of the Toowoomba Clinic, a small private mental health hospital. So since moving here, I have made it my business to become much better informed of bushfire risk. And that's been primarily driven by the fact that we have lived through extreme bushfire conditions that were incredibly intimidating and resulted in us spending a whole summer season with our bags packed in the boot ready to vacate and go. So if I knew then what I know now, I may not have been as willing to live where I live. Look, after the recent rains we've had here, it's looking lush. It's green, it's verdant, it's healthy, it's happy. It's a complete contradiction to what it was like 18 months ago. It could be less than six months if we have extended dry periods. Six to 12 months would dry it out pretty quickly. So we live on the escarpment at the top of the Great Dividing Range. We have an extensive rise in terrain which has an accelerating effect on the speed of a bushfire. So for every 10 degrees in slope, the speed of a bushfire doubles. That doesn't give you any time to scratch yourself or even think about packing a bag. You've got to be ready to go there and then. One of the big insights I had came to me as a result of attending a public forum, uh, which was addressed by Lee Johnson, who was a uh, Commissioner of the Queensland Fire and Emergency Service. And Lee Johnson said, if there is a day of catastrophic risk and you live on an escarpment and you live in a vulnerable area, in fact, his words were, just get the hell out of there. Toowoomba residents aren't aware of the risk. Council says in their disaster management plan that was published six years ago that they would conduct a campaign to communicate that risk to residents. They have not done that. Toowoomba residents can't be expected to know it. Someone's got to take leadership in providing that information. And in my opinion, that should have been done by council. Toowoomba sits on top of a mountain range. We have a 35 kilometre escarpment frontage. We are the most exposed large community in Australia to catastrophic bushfire risk. Toowoomba is circled by a ring of bushfire risk. Operation Coolburn is a re news release that they send out every year at about this time where they say they're going to do burning off on the regions. They have applied to the Department of Fire and Emergency Services. In the last six years, they have been given permission to conduct seven burns. Seven burns in six years when you've got a 35 kilometre frontage is a joke. In every situation, the landowner where a fire originates from is responsible for the damage caused by the fire. In our particular example, one of the largest landowners on the Toowoomba escarpment is the Toowoomba Regional Council. The Toowoomba Regional Council have thousands of hectares of land that they've bought along the escarpment or been given as part of development application processes to provide amenity for residents. But the consequence of owning the land comes with responsibilities. And I have no sense that council actually understands that as the landowner, they're responsible for managing the risk, for mitigating the risk, and that they are responsible financially for any risk emanating from their land. The family that I'm part of has, has been running cattle over the escarpment and farming this country for over 100 years. I am aware of people who have tried to manage bushfire risk by reducing vegetation and reducing the risk to the, their property, 
and they have come foul of council for trying to do that. Traditionally, family members have farmed this country um, and they've grazed it, and the grazing itself was a particularly effective method of managing the understory vegetation growth along the escarpment, which is part of the fuel load that helps a fire gain a foothold. Where we live here, um, we've, we mow. We, we have a, a ride on mower and mow two or three acres of council land behind us because we want to manage the vegetation in the understory fuel loads because we're not prepared to see that just keep growing. Uh, council hasn't maintained it once in the five years we've been here. I take offence to remarks by council that say that they consider this area behind us to be a, a bushfire mitigation zone when there's a hardwood eucalypt forest that's got 70% vegetation coverage at the top of a range. I just think that's bizarre. There's been no communication with people in vulnerable use infrastructure like schools, daycare centres, nursing homes. Um, there are 13 nursing homes, there's 12 schools, there's hospitals, there's all sorts of vulnerable uses along the escarpment. And if we were to have a bushfire coming up the range along a big front, um, trying to move hundreds of kids from a school or hundreds of people from a large nursing home or hundreds of patients from a hospital becomes an operational nightmare. And I don't think there's been a lot of communication with operators of that critical infrastructure about the risk and about the need for them to have emergency evacuation plans and training in place. We live here with council-owned bushland hundreds of hectares of bushland at the top of the range within five metres of the back boundary of this property. Um, we've got trees that are up to 40 metres high and my understanding is that the Inspector General of Emergency Management defines good neighbours as people who maintain a fire break between their vegetation and neighbouring properties of one and a half times the height of a tree. Now that would mean that council would need to maintain a buffer zone between its eucalypt forests and residential neighbours one and a half times the height of the nearest tree. So 50, 60, maybe 70 metres buffer zone. It's not a lot to ask. It's a responsible neighbourly thing to do. And if you're not doing that, then you're not being a good neighbour.